Thank you. Thanks, Arnie. Uh, my, my name is Ralph Weber, and I am a chartered life underwriter, registered employee benefit consultant, and a certified financial planner. I design healthcare financing products, and, and I've done that, and I continue to do that in the United States and in Canada. Uh, I've lived in Canada, I've lived in the United States, I've lived in Germany, Thailand, and Nepal. So I've seen many healthcare systems, and I've been involved in the healthcare financing in three of those countries. So what, what my goal is today is to give you some, some talking points when you hear the arguments for proponents of single payer or mandates, uh, the, you know, the, the talking points on what will work, what won't, and uh, finally end with some proposals for some reform. First of all, today nobody has really defined what the problem is. What what is the healthcare crisis? You hear people saying, "Well, the, the crisis is that we have you know twenty percent uninsured. The crisis is you know that it's too expensive. The crisis is that you know people are dying on the on the steps of emergency room." Nobody's actually come up with a unified so you know definition of the crisis. And until the problem is correctly identified, we cannot tackle the problem. And, and create some some results. Basically, healthcare financing is expensive because medical treatment is expensive. Number one driver of healthcare is utilization. People use care; that's expensive. People want the, mo the 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 newest technology. They want the 64 slice CAT scan. They want the MRI, and that costs money. But one of the drivers of that utilization is lifestyle choice. Purdue just did a, a study last year. 74% of claims cost is due to lifestyle choices. Smoking, eating, you know, <laughs> drinking, diet, coke, those kinds of things are driving, driving the cost. And some of the plans, the, the health care plans, the health insurance, uh, you know, as, as we kind of loosely call them, they don't have correct uh, cost containment elements in the design aimed at bringing down utilization. You know, we, we give people a, a, a blank card and we say, go anywhere you want and, and show this card and pay $10 and you can get health care. And people are insulated from the true cost of providing that care. And when we have insulation, when we have a disconnect between the cost and visibility of that cost, that's when it goes up. When consumers are more involved in the financial decisions, that's when they become more cost conscious. Now, I want to talk, to talk about some of the myths that we hear about the health care crisis. There are many myths that are that have been circulated to convince us that there is really a crisis, and a lot of the people that are that are circulating these myths, their end game is government complete government takeover. So so they're creating all these myths to convince us that there's a huge crisis. So we're going to go down. We're going to go through some of these myths one by one, and then we're going to talk about the solutions. The first myth is the myth of the uninsured. We hear all the time. U.S. Census Bureau has reported that 15.8% of the population is uninsured, or that's what the media tells us. In actual fact, if you study, if you study that U.S. Census Bureau report, it will show that 15.8% are uninsured at any given point during the year. They're not chronically uninsured all the time. As a matter of fact, only three per, <coughs> less than 3%. In California, it's 2.71% of the population are involuntarily uninsured, and that's very, very important. This is the insured population of California, 80%, 27.7 million. 9% are government program eligible. In other words, they are eligible for Medi-Cal or Medicare. They just haven't bothered to fill out the paperwork because you know how, how hard government paperwork is. They won't fill it out until they need it. <coughs> Another 6% have income over 50000 and could easily afford health care coverage if they chose to get it, but they just haven't. They, they feel that it's not a you know, financially viable solution with the products that are on the market today. Another 2%, 652000 are short-term un uninsured, three to six months. They're just between jobs. Maybe they haven't exercised their COBRA. And, you know, if they needed to, though, most of them have the ability to exercise it. Some of them have chosen to gamble and go without so that leaves us with only, this is California only, 938,000, or uh, it's actually 2.71%, which are long-term chronically uninsured. Uh, this is a breakdown of those same numbers. This is just the uninsured by themselves, okay? The government program eligible, that's 44% of the uninsured. 
uh, income 50,000 is 32 percent, <coughs> short-term uninsured, and leaving only this piece of the pie. So instead of trying to tackle this whole pie, we need to focus only on this little piece. It makes the problem come right into perspective. Well, let's look at the Canadian alternative. In Canada, 16.8% of the population do not have access to a primary care physician. And since you need a referral to go to a specialist, that means 16.8% don't have access to a specialist. Another thing that nobody in this room probably heard before is that between 25 and 5% of Canadians are uninsured. Everybody says, well, all of Canada is uninsured. They have socialized medicine. It's mandatory. Well, it is mandatory. Different provinces have different systems. In some provinces, you actually have to pay a premium on your tax return. But there's people that don't file tax returns, and if they don't file it, they don't have the card. Now, some people would argue, well, they can get care. <coughs> Just like those people that are eligible to sign up for Medicare can get care, okay? But they don't have the coverage, the, the provincial health insurance card. Homeless people, they're not covered. They're not covered. And if a homeless pe person with, with no provincial health insurance card goes to a hospital, unlike in the United States, they can be denied treatment unless it's life-threatening. Okay? It has, they have to be, even bleeding isn't life-threatening. It has to be life-threatening in order for them to get care regardless of whether they're insured or not. And, and this is a, an example of some of the, the signs that have popped up in emergency rooms across Canada. Here you go, emergency room hospital charge, non-residents of Canada, $320, uninsured Canadians, $150, okay? So there's signs all over, West Coast, East Coast. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's common knowledge in Canada that there are uninsured Canadians, okay? We need to understand that. So it's not a 100% covered system, and even those that are insured, 17% of them don't have access. Measures of efficiency, this is another common myth. They say that our system is the 37th in the world, 37th best or 37th worst, and it's the WHO, the, the World Health Organization, that tells us this. Their measures of efficiency that they use, two of the most common ones, are um, life expectancy and infant mortality. Now, life expectancy actually has very little to do with health care delivery. People die in their sleep, people die in car accidents all the time. Lifestyle choices, let's compare Japan. Japan has the longest life expectancy. They eat fish, tofu, and drink green tea. Okay, they're going to have healthier lifestyles. Here, we eat Big Macs, Diet Coke, and French fries. Okay. I mean, this is a no-brainer. So there's a lot of things that, that drive life expectancy other than health care delivery. Infant mortality. In Switzerland, a baby born less than 30 centimeters or one foot is not considered a live birth. Okay, so if it is 29 centimeters, dies after a day or two, it doesn't count against the infant mortality. Here, it counts against infant mortality. Okay, so we have to be consistent. Uh, in some countries, it's not considered a live birth until it actually says hello, comrade. Okay, so we have to be consistent. <laughs> Better measures of uh, healthcare delivery are critical illness.